सो हाई एवरी वन माई नेम इज शिवम बोहरा वेलकम टू द ऑफिशियल चैनल ऑफ कोर्ट शिफ इन दिस सीरीज विल सॉल्व सम रियली फन प्रॉब्लम बेस्ड ऑन रिकर्शन एंड बैक ट्रैकिंग द डिफिकल्टी लेवल ऑफ दीज प्रॉब्लम वुड बी फ्रॉम केक वॉक टिल ईजी एंड द प्री रिक्विजिट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर कोर्स इज द बेसिक आइडिया ऑन रिकर्जन सो द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट से इज दैट प्रिंट नंबर फ्रॉम वन टू एन विदाउट यूजिंग अ लूप राइट so if let's say n is 5 then i'll print all the numbers starting from 1 and till this 5 right so i'll print 1 2 3 4 5 5 now it is also guaranteed that this number n is going to be a positive integer this number n is going to be a positive integer and also we have to print we have to print all these numbers without using a loop so if let's say i am using c++ c or java now these three languages offers us for loop while loop and do while loop now to solve this problem we are not allowed to use these loops right so we have to solve this problem without using a loop so now i want you to pause this video right right now and think of a possible solution and write your guess write your guess in the comment section below right so you can later on verify whether your guess was correct or not right so to solve this problem we have two different approaches the first one using recursion and the second one using go to and if statements so let's see how we are going to tackle this problem using the recursion so let's say i have to print these n numbers using recursion so for this i'll create a function fun having two arguments count and in right now the purpose of this variable count is to print the current element is to print the current element so count would be initially 1 count is initially 1 so we would print 1 then i'll change the value of count from 1 to 2 so then it would print 2 then 3 then 4 and so on till n right so we would have these two variables count to print the current element and n to stop at n right now inside this function fun i'll simply print the count right so if count was initially 1 then we would print 1 in this case right now let's say n is 1 so in this case we only have to print a single integer 1 right so count is 1 n is 1 so we would print 1 after this after printing this count i have to stop right i have to go out of this function fun so for this i'll use this if condition if count is equals to equals to n if the number that we have printed just now is equal to n right if it is equal to n then in that case we simply have to stop right so if count is equals to n then we would simply return return right return no value this this return means that we would simply go out of this function fun right after this after this if let's say n is 2 if n is 2 so firstly fun count comma n so firstly count is 1 count is 1 over here and n is 2 right fun 1 comma 2 so we are calling this function 1 comma 2 from our main or 1 comma n from our main right because n is 2 so let's call it fun 1 comma 2 fun 1 comma 2 so we are calling this function fun 1 comma 2 right we would print this count we would print this count so we we would print 1 right after this we will check whether 1 count is equals to n or not n is 2 count is 
So both are different. Hence, this condition is false, right? So we would not return right now, right? So after this, I would call this function fun count plus one n, right? Now count is one. Count plus one is count is one. One plus one is two. N is also two. So this function one comma two would now call the function fun two comma two, right? So now I am calling this function fun two comma two. So let me quickly erase this. So now we are calling this function two comma two, right? So now my count is two. My n is also two. I would print count. Count is two. So now I would print two. We already have printed one, right? Now I would print two. If count is equal to equal to n, now both are two at this moment. So this if condition is true. So you would simply return at this moment, right? So now this function two comma two would again go back to function one comma two, right? Or fun one comma two. So now we were calling this function two comma two over here inside the function one one comma two. So now we are again back to this statement, right? We have already executed this statement. So now we would go to the end of this function, right? So now we have executed the function one comma two. We have executed both these functions, and at the end we have printed one comma two in this case, right? So using recursion. We can also print numbers from one to n. So let's see the code for this. So firstly, I'll input n, and then I'll call this function fun. So it has two arguments, count and n. So I'll pass count and n. Since I'll start from one, so my count is initially uh, set as one. So my first argument is one, and the second one is n. Then I'll simply create this function fun, and the first argument is count. The second one is n. Then firstly, I'll simply print this count, right? So I'll write c out count and a space. Then I'll check if my count is if is equals to n or not. So I'll write if count equals to equals to n or not. So if this condition is true, I'll simply return. Right, and after this, if my condition is not true, then I'll simply again call the function fun, and this time count would be uh, set as count plus one, and the second argument would be n. Right. So now let's run the code. So over here, over here, the input is five, so we will print simply the first five numbers. Right. So now let's see the second approach. So just like a simple loop, we would initialize, we would check the base condition, and we would update our variable, right? So let's say I, I have to start from one. So I'll initialize a variable i to one, right? Then I'll check my base condition. So i should be less than or equals to n, right? Like any other loop. Then I'll simply print the value of i. So I'll let's see out i, then a space. I'll update the value of i i plus plus, and after this, after this, I need to go back, right? I need to go back over here at line number ten, right? Because using a sim simple if condition, after executing this if condition, what would happen is i is one. This condition is true because if let's say n is five, so one is less than five. This is true. I'll simply print one. I'll change the value of i from one to two, and then exit, right? Or simply end this if condition. But we need to go back over here before this if condition. So now what I would do is, I'll simply use a jump statement. I'll simply write go to. Then I'll simply write a label name. So let's let's say the label name is back. So I'll write back. And before this if condition, I'll write back and a colon. So now what would happen is, as soon as I call this go to function or this go to statement, now what would happen is after this i plus plus, it would again go back to line number ten, right? 
again it would check the if condition again it would print the value of i again it would update the value of i right so i is 1 then i'll check is if 1 is less than or equals to n n is let's say 5 so 1 is less than 5 this is true i would print 1 then i'll change the value of 1 to 2 i'll go go to back i'll go over here to line number 10 is 2 less than is 2 less than n the answer is yes again i'll print 2 then 2 would be converted to 3 again it would print 3 then 4 then 5 and after it has printed 5 now here i plus plus i would now become 6 it would go to back it would go over here line number 10 then is 10 less than or equals to n n is 5 so is 6 less than equals to 5 the answer is no so this would this this time this would simply discard this these three statements or it would simply come out of this if condition and it would simply return zero or simply exit this program right so if i run this code if i run this code over here let's say input is seven so this would now print the first seven natural numbers right 